Ottawa, um, if you go to the website of the workshop, you can find actually all the lessons that we will go through at the bottom of that page. And today we are starting with Git intro and we continue with that tomorrow. And actually in the third day, so on Thursday, we will do collaborative with Git. So a bit of a motivation why Git is necessary. And I think, I mean, well, mo uh, all of you have at least one good reason for uh, learning it. But uh, I will tell you what the advantage is of, uh, of using version control. So, so the, well, the very big advantage is that you can record snapshots, different time snapshots of your project. And, uh, and uh, also the advantage is that you can actually comment what these, uh, these uh, snapshots are all about. I mean, what are the changes that you implemented in, in a different uh, points of time? And, uh, and also a very good point is that uh, you can have branching for your, um, for your uh, project. So you can work on several features. You can switch between them before they, uh, they are actually complete. And also different people can work on the same project independently and without uh, interfering with uh, each other's work. And uh, you can experiment with different ideas. If, if it turns out it is not a good one, then you can just discard it. Nothing wrong happens with your actual project. And you can also merge your successful ideas. And we will learn all uh, about this in the following two days. So what do we uh, want to version control? Often it's software, it doesn't have to be software. It can be plain documents, it can be just simple scripts, it can be manuscripts, and actually Git uh, is uh, great for working with uh, LaTeX documents. You can uh, also um, version control different uh, different databases, and uh, and here is actually what well, large databases um, is one good reason for doing version control instead of just copying different uh, uh, copying your uh, your project uh, um, in uh, different directories. And the reason is because you are only going to save the modifications to your files. So you are not multiplying uh, the number of um, well the 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 well the data the uh, sorry the the storage needs to to save this data doesn't increase a lot just by version controlling it and uh, I was thinking that uh, we should take like two minutes to discuss um, the problems with uh, with versioning uh, well with version in control uh, uh, libraries and uh, codes in this way. So by simply copying different versions uh, of the project with different version numbers and then uh, archiving it. So uh, let's use uh, the collaborative document for this. So two minutes and I'm going to switch to the hack and be. So uh, maybe we can add the line there. So what are the problems? with versioning control a project in this way. So I will uh, pick up some of the, the ones I think are, uh, are most relevant. So basically there is no info on the changes or the updates. You would have to actually have an additional document that uh, tracks those changes. And that can be cumbersome because it's not together with the repo, uh, uh, sorry, with, uh, with the project directory. Um, if, um, if you, um, um, if you tar your files, uh, of course, I mean you can save space, but then it uh, then it takes extra time to actually uh, untar the files and uh, and reach uh, the files that you actually need. Um, 
and yeah, it's really hard to understand what are the changes in each uh, version. And definitely tedious. It takes several steps to uh, to get the, at the files or the particular well the, at the particular version of the file that uh, you may be interested in. So um, version control is great because we all make mistakes, right? So we want to be able to, ba to go uh, back in time to, to a version that uh, we are happy with, a version that has been working, or simply to, uh, to review changes that we have done at a certain time, or uh, that uh, some of our colleagues have done at a certain time. And, uh, and uh, together with branches, um, it's great because you can work on several issues, several features within one code. And, uh, and you can keep them separate and merge them at the point when, uh, when you want, um, when you are happy with, basically with your implementation. And uh, it's great for collaborating with, uh, with other persons. So you do not have to ask your, uh, these questions anymore. I mean, can you send me the latest version? You simply can point to the, to the repository, um, where uh, where your code is uh, saved, and then uh, and then uh, they can just uh, get the latest version, or they can check the history of your uh, repository. And this is also great for repro uh, reproducibility. You can refer to a unique. Um, so each version has a unique identifier. Uh, so if someone wants to reproduce the results that you have in a paper, then they can just uh, use the same uh, version. So um, I'm going to skip this. I will just mention that uh, there are other tools for doing version control, uh, but uh, we are using Git uh, together with GitHub because it is one of the most uh, popular ones. And uh, you, may, you may of course say, why do I actually need to learn Git? Well, of course there is a, a bit of a learning co uh, curve, but I would say that you do not have to be an expert to really benefit from using it. So you can just work with a basic set of commands and uh, that will help you enormously in your uh, development, being, uh, being small or large. So uh, I'm going to uh, show you how a uh, Git repository can look like. And uh, I will take uh, for this purpose, um, uh, the repository with, uh, that the Event Horizon Telescope uh, team has been uh, uh, working with. So I will just uh, open this in a separate tab. So um, this is a very large repository. I mean, there are many different uh, um, contributors to this uh, repository. Uh, it's uh, hosted on GitHub. The organization is uh, ACHEL. The repository itself is called uh, EHT Imaging. So it's, uh, it's uh, actually a repository that uh, uh, keeps the software um, for um, processing the images that uh, the telescope uh, gives. And um, I should say that if, so let's scroll down uh, to begin with. So um, each good repository has, has, a, has a README. And uh, what this readme should contain is a, a short description of the repository. So uh, in this case, it's a set of Python modules for uh, analyzing the data. It also contains some words on, on the installation and uh, also the documentation. So if we scroll down a bit, so all, all good uh, codes come with a good documentation. And uh, also very importantly is that it should provide the license. What kind, so am I allowed to use this uh, repository or not? And how should I cite it if, uh, if I use it in my research? So all these are important ingredients for a shared uh, repository. So, um, but what we can see uh, close to the top menu is that uh, it has, something like a bit more than 2000 commits in the entire repository. And, uh, and it consists of uh, different directories and, uh, and files. The, the latest version is the, this one tagged with one, two, five. And uh, actually the commit, 
let's see, if I click there, then I can see that the hash for this, so the unique identifier for this version is, uh, is this number. And we will show you uh, in the following how you, how you can actually, how do you uh, obtain these numbers? And uh, let's see, if I go back to the main page of the repository and I click on this and I can go to insights. So uh, one can see, for example, that the number of contributors is, uh, is, is actually very large. And uh, there is also a very nice graph on, uh, on the number of commits uh, um, uh, with respect to time. And also, I mean, which are some of the most active developers for this uh, particular project. And, um, and uh, the commits here actually shares the history of all the commits for this uh, uh, repository. It's a bit slow. It must be a script, yes, in the background. Okay, it was not as interesting as I thought. Uh, but uh, one uh, one nice thing is that um, is to see actually the number of forks uh, that um, that the repository uh, has, and this is actually copies of these repositories in other projects, uh, in other people's um, uh, GitHub uh, repositories, and we will learn more about this in the Git uh, collaborative. So let me see, I will go, yes, now I remember actually what I should show you. A very nice feature that uh, that you have uh, on uh, GitHub and uh, it's also available on, the, on GitLab is the annotation one. So let me just go to one uh, file, doesn't really matter which one. Uh, let's uh, go to requirements. And if I uh, click on blame and it's, but it's not a very nice uh, name, but uh, basically what it means uh, um, is that, um, well, it's it's kind of like an annotation. So uh, so what uh, this um, does is to show the user that has changed uh, a particular line. So we, which is the latest uh, user that has changed a particular line, and why uh, and when, and why that uh, is important is, for example, if there is a very fancy feature that has been implemented in this uh, repository, and you would like to know uh, how. Um, well, how they've done it, and you want to uh, to also find out more information from the developers, then you can uh, contact this particular user uh, directly. Uh, okay, this is just the requirements page, but uh, but I mean you can extrapolate it uh, um, a little bit, and then uh, and also if you have uh, uh, found a bug, then you may want to uh, to discuss with this particular person and suggest some improvements maybe from the bug and uh, uh, or uh, yeah i would say um that uh, it's always good to have a, a collaboration uh, sorry a discussion with uh, with the, the collaborators before uh, before maybe uh, submitting some changes to a repository especially if it's a large one but more about this on uh, first day so um we have gone through that so in the following, what we are going to, uh, to do is to uh, uh, learn how we can actually uh, create a repository on our uh, local computer. And uh, then tomorrow morning, we will learn how we can uh, actually uh, share it uh, on, uh, how we can, uh, um, sorry, how we can sync that on uh, GitHub and uh, later on share it with other collaborators. And um, let's see if there are some questions before we start the next part. So uh, you can do blame also on the command line. Yes. Um, yes, that was the end. Yes, that's a nice question. So um, what is a Git repository? So as I said, Git is a version control system or well, one of them. You can record uh, snapshots of your project directory. So you can um, basically track the content of the folder and all the, the contents within the folder as it changes over time. And, um, and um, uh, 
you can basically tell Git when you actually want to save the modifications in your um, project directory. And then Git is going to record this uh, snapshot over this entire project. And for every uh, snapshot, it is going to assign it a version or a hash, uh, a hashtag, as um, I will show you. And uh, these snapshots will be kept inside a subfolder, which is .git, so it's a hidden folder. And um, basically all, well, all these snapshots of the, um, of the, um, um, of the project folder and uh, its history are kept in that. And that's kind of like a black box. But uh, there are ways, uh, ways to um, um, check, um, well, uh, there are ways to uh, to check those files as well, but we will not really show that. So um, if you do happen to remove uh, this hidden uh, .git uh, folder, then you're going to remove the whole direct directory, the whole repository and the history, but you will keep the working directory. So uh, let's um, let's actually see how you can initialize a um, a GitHub uh, directory. So I will move to uh, my uh, terminal, and I suggest that um, that you that you just watch for the moment. If you are uh, fast, then you may type along, but uh, you we will do this as an exercise as well later on. So it's not a must. What I will do is I will start uh, creating a directory. I will call it the uh, workshop, and and I will go into this uh, directory. So this uh, is going to um, Let's see, I will create another uh, directory here, which I call recipe. So this is going to be my um, uh, my working directory. And um, up to now, this is an empty directory, does not contain anything. But uh, what I will do is uh, I will type it in it. And what this does, so it's going to initialize the directory recipe as a GitHub uh, directory. And uh, I'm going to uh, receive some uh, uh, some hints from Git. It, it tells me that uh, that the, the default branch name uh, for this uh, repository, so the uh, the default for the for the first branch of the repository uh, is uh, called master. And I should mention here that depending on your uh, operating system and also on the version of Git that you have, your branch may be called main. So please keep that in mind. But uh, um, uh, for me, this initial branch is called uh, master. And um, what I have now is... Um, Dana. There's yes. a question, HackMD, can mm -hmm. you zoom in a little bit? The fonts are small. I guess probably the terminal. Yes. Is this better? Probably. Well, let's see. I can zoom some more if you want. You can also see my latest comments at the bottom. That may be a bit too small still. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I have in addition is this um, hidden Git uh, directory where all the snapshots of my working directory are going to be uh, saved. And um, what uh, you were uh, advised to do is to, uh, to set up Git for this workshop. And I will not uh, go through this. So, um, so we have our empty Git uh, repository. So let's do a Git status uh, um, to start with. So what does the Git status uh, tell us? It tells us the, the name of the branch that uh, we are on. And I would say that you should use Git status whenever you are um, entering a Git, uh, a Git uh, repository. Maybe you haven't worked on it for, uh, for uh, what, several days or weeks and you do not remember if you have uh, done any changes changes or not, Git status is really your friend, especially for uh, beginners uh, for Git, but, but not only. So I am on the master branch now. Up to now, I have no commits. 
And what does that mean? So I have not taken any snapshots of my uh, working directory. Okay. And also I have nothing to commit. Well, I, this, at this point, the directory, the working directory is empty. So let's uh, add some files and, uh, and do our first uh, commit. Let's create two files, one called instructions. And I'm going to uh, copy this. And I am using VI as an editor, but you should use the editor that you're comfortable with. And uh, uh, let's create another file, which is called ingredients. Okay, so now we have a set of instructions and ingredients for, uh, for our recipe. So let's do a git status again. So what does it tell us? That we have two files that we have uh, modified and they are shown in, uh, in uh, red. So the ingredients and the uh, instructions. And uh, what it tells us that, that we have these um, untracked files um, so how do we track files? How do we tell Git that uh, these are files that we want to, uh, to uh, add uh, to uh, our snapshots? We use the git add command for that. So git add ingredients. So let's see, git status again. It says, okay, I have now a, um, a modified and staged file. So this green file, a color, well, green colored file, and maybe the colors are different in your terminal. This is going to be included in my next snapshot, my next commit. But uh, this one is still well modified, but but Git doesn't know about it yet, so it's still untracked. So in order to for Git to keep track of that as well, we need to add it as well. So Git add and um, um, it will start keeping track of this file. So git status again. Look at the look at the So I have now um, uh, these two modified files, and they are ready to be staged. Uh, sorry, they are staged and they are ready to be committed. So uh, what I can do now is to uh, to use git commit uh, and. Uh, Let's press enter and says, please enter the commit uh, message for your changes. And I am going to um, write added instructions and ingredients. And uh, I would say the very first line of the commit message is important and it should con consist um, of a summary of the changes that you have implemented in this commit. But uh, you can add uh, well, a descriptive paragraph as well to make it easier for, uh, for yourself later on and also for your collaborators to know what this commit is all about. So I can uh, add that uh, this is a detailed, well, okay, or what should I say? This is a first, no, the starting point for my recipe. Okay, I'm going to save this. And I am prompted with a message. It says that uh, I have committed on the master branch, the hash for this commit is uh, this uh, number here. And it's actually a, uh, a um, it's shortened compared, uh, the, the actual hash is uh, something like, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if it's like 52 characters long. I, I don't know it by heart, but uh, that uh, can actually be uh, configured. And uh, I have uh, added two um, modifications. Uh, to this commit. So two files have been uh, modified and, uh, and uh, those files are the ingredients and the instructions. So 
So uh, yes. So instead of um, of um, um, using git commit and then being prompted with a uh, with a text editor uh, to uh, write my commit message, I could have used the command git commit dash m and the commit message. And uh, what it means that, um, uh, so after the dash M option, I should have uh, basically a commit message. In this, uh, in, uh, in the previous case, it was the added uh, ingredients and uh, instructions. So then each, um, well, this message is actually going to, uh, to show up uh, for, uh, for uh, the uh, commit that I have um, uh, produced. And, um, and uh, this is uh, useful if the commit message is uh, short. If you want to uh, write some uh, description, then uh, then uh, it's better you do not use the dash m flag and you just use git commit. Then you can write uh, write a, a longer uh, description for your commit uh, message. For this repository, which is uh, well very simple, it uh, does not really matter. But um, but for um, if you are programming and you have uh, introduced many modifications uh, in your commit, then it's good that you have you write a more extensive uh, description. So um, let's see if there are some questions in the uh, collaborative document. So. Um, We will tackle this more on uh, Thursday, but I would say that uh, uh, good repositories have um, have um, regular um, discussions on how to collaborate uh, to the project, or at least there is a clear uh, uh, a clear uh, description on how you can uh, collaborate to that project, and that can usually be in uh, in the readme. And indeed, I mean. Different people like to do uh, things uh, differently, and uh, I think it's nice if you can reach some uh, uh, common ground on how you can uh, collaborate together. So, um, uh, this uh, this is actually um, something that um, I can uh, talk about. So, for example, if you if you have created your uh, directory. Your repository in the wrong directory, you can simply move uh, move it in uh, in a different um, uh, in a different directory. So uh, I will just um, uh, let's see. I will go out of this. So uh, let me say show. Let's go to port. So for example, if I manage to do git init here, for example, so let's say git init, and I initialize this uh, wrong directory as the workshop, what I can do, I can get out of this one. I can uh, move this uh, into, for example, another, move it to a different name. I can create, uh, sorry, and create uh, another, directory, for this, and then I can move my recipe in this instead. So this is one way you could do this. So the relative parts uh, in the Git um, uh, project directory are, um, so I mean, Git, uh, the Git uses relative parts for it. So you can just uh, move your, uh, your uh, repository wherever uh, you uh, in fit. So uh, let's see, how are we on time? So yeah, uh, we are uh, good with the time. So in the following, we are going to take uh, 20 minutes for an exercise. And uh, what uh, you should do in this exercise is to, um, uh, to add base, to uh, to add a new uh, snapshot of your directory, so a new commit. So you should change the ingredients files and also the instructions, and uh, do uh, do commits from these uh, 
from these two different uh, changes. And you have some hints on how you can do that. And uh, if you are very fast, actually was, there is another exercise, yes, further down. So if you are very fast, then you can also do this optional exercise for comparing, renaming and removing. And uh, we are going to use 20 minutes for this. And then we are going to take a break until uh, quarter past. And uh, after this, we are going to resume with, uh, with the commit history. So uh, exercise plus break until quarter past. Okay. Um, should break be done first or combined? I would say exercise first and then break. Okay. Then you can be flexible about the break time. Okay. So we will, so during the exercises and things in the notes, if we go down to the bottom, you see the exercise notification, the link where it is. Um, so we need at least 10 minutes for a break. So shall we come back at 20 past? Otherwise we're combining. And yes, let's yeah. do that. so during the exercise, you can continue asking questions down below here and we will keep answering live. So with that said, see you soon. Good luck and bye for now. Can I go ahead? Yes, we are back. Okay, welcome back from the break. Now we'll uh, take a look at some of the questions from the hedge talk. Um, so what does the head pointing to, to master mean? Um, this is uh, something we will see in the Git log. When we do git log, uh, we see the hash and head pointing to master after the hash. It, it, uh, master is the, the branch that we're at and uh, head is pointing to the next, uh, to, to the point where, where we add commits. So it's a kernel recording head if we're thinking, thinking or like uh, old school tape recorders. So, uh, do you see any uh, other questions we should answer, uh, Diana? I think some of them will be clearer after we uh, go through, uh, through the history, but maybe, yeah, maybe explain what uh, the colors mean when uh, one does uh, git diff. That might be interesting. Right. Now let's take a look at git diff. So, the, uh, when we do git diff and we see the uh, A ingredients text are, are written in red and the B ingredients text are written in green. So this means that's the, that the B, the, the green things are added. So, so here we see that, that uh, a half onion is added to the ingredients text. And that was the diff is showing. And the same goes for instructions.txt, that uh, there is a line missing in the original instructions text compared to the new instructions.txt, which, which has the line enjoy. 
Yeah, and maybe I could just add that the A and B, so the A is for the first hash at the top, uh, so the 26 one, and uh, the and B is for the EC0 zone hash. So, um, uh, because in this particular example, we are, uh, we are looking the difference of modifications introduced in two different commits. Right. Okay, I think we'll continue with the git history and log. We already had a, a look at git log and uh, we see in the git log that we get the commit message uh, listed. So um, on the web page, we see a, a longer list of uh, from the git log. And so we get, get the history of the file or, or, or the history. So um, you see, see the commit messages lined up after each other. And git log starts with the latest commit and the older ones are listed uh, uh, below. Um, and we see the complete uh, hash, the long hashes as they are uniquely labeled. Uh, one uh, command that is uh, easy to, uh, is very efficient to use, is to use git log one line, and we get a commit for each line. And here we see the head pointing to master as in the, as the, the long uh, output of the git log head. Uh, here, the short form of the hashes are listed instead of the long form. So, so uh, we see the importance of having good commit messages in, in the type in the in the on the one line. So we get so we get a good understanding what what the history of the uh, repository is. So uh, writing uh, useful commits messages is very important. So uh, a good example here, we see a good title, increase threshold alpha to 2.0, and then the motivation for the change. And there is an empty line between the, the first line and, and the more detailed commit messages, commit message. So uh, there are uh, bad examples of uh, commit messages like fix, oops, save work. Um, but the good, good ones are, are commit messages in English that will be understood from years from now by someone else or by your future you. So good references are or there are some links to to where uh, you can find good references for uh, commit messages. You can also browse repositories to to write how to write commit messages and to get inspired by their styles. Some SciPy, NumPy, Pandas, and some more. Some more. But as always, it's better to make any commit than to no commit. So especially in small projects. So let not the perfect be the enemy of the good enough. Um, besides uh, adding uh, 
uh, adding files to for committing, which we can also also uh, use a special file called git ignore for ignoring files and paths. That's especially files that are get generated due to compilation or uh, yes or, or other generating tools. Yes, so should we add the track all files in a project? How about generated files? I already said that generated files should be tracked. Um, with the <clears throat> so this is uh, a bad time D to commit compiled binaries to version control. And the reasons for this is um, your code could be run on different platforms. So there could be a lot of objects, files, or binaries. Um, and they can easily be, they are easily generated by, by uh, a known recipe. So th these files are automatically generated and thus do not contribute to any meaningful way to, to the repository history. And, uh, and uh, generated files can be quite large. So the number of changes to track the source code change can increase very quickly. So uh, also when tracking generated files, you can see differences in the code, although you haven't touched the code. So this is the reason so we don't want to have generated files. So here's an example of a G, dot G, G, GIT ignore. Uh, compiled Python files are not uh, then uh, tracked. And ignore compiled Python 3 files are not tracked. And here is an example from our official Git, uh, Git documentation, ignoring objects and archives, ignoring generated HTML files, and then uh, exception is full HTML, which is maintained by hand. And then say ignore everything under build directory. The git ignore should be a part of the repository because we make to sure that all developers see, see the same behavior. So all files should either be tracked or ignored. Okay, so then we're covered uh, git log and then Git ignore. Then we're going to take a look at branching and branching and merging. So we we'll, now we'll be able to create the merge branches. Uh, after this lesson, and then know the difference between branch and a tag. So, in the previous section, we tracked a guacamole recipe with the Git. Up until now, our repository has only one branch with the one commit coming after the other. So, we have a repository like uh, the drawing with the three git, three commits and a master pointing to the last commit M3 and the head pointing to master. So 
so um, what we want to do is uh, like this we want to develop features several features and combine them to the master branch after they are developed Software development is often not linear. We typically need at least one version of the code to work, to compile, to give expected results. At the same time, we work on new features, often several features concurrently, and often they are unfinished. So we need to be able to have separate different lines of work really well. So the strength of version control is that it permits the researcher to isolate different tracks of work, which can be later merged to create a composite version of, of, the, of that contains that all changes. So he, here we see, uh, we have a master branch and then feature branch B1, B2, B3 which are merged to the master at point X2. And we have a, a, a second, second branch or a third branch C in C1, uh, which is, which then gets to commit M4 and uh, are merged at X3 in the, in the uh, commit Jorn, punch. Can you commit make graph. your web browser a little bit narrower so it fits in the shared screen? Well, it's not in the shared screen. Uh, yeah, uh, like see. the right side is trailing off. Yeah. Or maybe zoom out some or something. OK, no, that. I didn't help. Can can you narrow the web browser some? No, oh, I'm not able to narrow the web. Yeah, yeah, I can narrow the web browser. That's right okay, there. Yes, that's there, good. There, there it is. And then if the terminal scrolls over, same. Okay, thanks. So a group of commits that create a single narrative are called a branch. Well, there are different branch strategies, but it is useful to think that a branch tells the story of a feature. Example, fast sequence extraction or Python interface or fixing bug in matrix inversion algorithm. So uh, we'll define uh, an alias that is helpful when watching, looking at branches. So uh, Git will then be able to nicely visualize branches structure in the terminal without having to remember a, remember a long Git command. So this is uh, extensively used in the rest of this and other lessons. So we'll uh, write write the, the git, git uh, alias. So it's git config minus global alias graph log minus minus all minus minus graph Minus minus decorate minus minus one line. And I think that's all. Yeah, and maybe I can add it. 
so I use Gitcraft a lot, especially when working with branches. And and you can uh, define any alias that you want uh, for uh, for a command that you use often. And especially, I mean, if you use a command with particular options that you do not want to type all the time. So so uh, so find a name which is suitable for that and uh, and define an alias. That that can be that can save you a lot of typing. So if we call it then by calling the, the name graph, git graph. So it now shows it's very similar to git one line, git log one line currently. But when we add the branches, we will see that it will visualize these branches and, and do that, this very well. So we are, are we are um, in the recipe repository, and we have three commits and only one development line branch, and this branch is called master. So Git prints uh, the abbreviations of this the checksums, the, the short form on the hashes. And uh, branch master points to the, the head commit. And, and the head is point, another pointer, which points to where we are right now. So we can use the command git branch as well to see that we are the, the, the star shows that we are on the uh, asterisk shows us that we are on uh, the branch master. It doesn't, the command shows where we are, it doesn't create a branch. So now we'll create branches and we'll switch between them and merge them and how to remove branches afterwards. So now you can take now you can type along. So we'll create a branch experiment and check out to the experiment branch and, and see how it looks. Git experiment master this tell um, git branch. Experiment, experiment master. This creates the branch experiment from master, from the master branch. Git checkout experiment. Then we, Git tells us that it switched to branch experiment. Git branch. Now the star moved to the experiment my experiment uh, branch. And if we type git graph, how does it look? So now, now we see the head has is pointing to experiment and not to master. So it's the command git checkout experiment that that moves the head pointer to the experiment branch. And now we'll add the uh, two spoon, tablespoons of cilantro to the top of the ingredients text. Oh no, ingredients. Two tablespoons of cilantro. So we'll stage it. Git add ingredients to text. Git 
Kit Kumit Mozem. Let us try with some cilantro. And then we'll reduce the amount of cilantro by one tablespoon and stage it and commit again. Now no ingredients to text. One tablespoon of cilantro. Git add. Git status, git add, ingredients of text, commit, minus M, maybe a little bit less cilantro. So now we have created two commits and we'll use the command git graph and we see that experiment uh, has moved away from the branch master with two com commits. So now, now you can uh, try the uh, exercise, create and commit branches, create another new branch and a few more commits, and we will use the next section to practice merging. The goal of the exercise is to end up with three branches. So change to the branch master and create another branch called less salt. So you have 20 minutes for this exercise. So after the exercise, uh, then uh, we'll take a short break as well, right? So uh, we can be back at, uh, let's see, so 46, so 20 plus, We can come back at 20 past the, the hour. 20 past the hour, yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe before we start with the exercise, uh, so when uh, when do you use uh, branches beyond? Oh, I use branches almost all the time. So I, when I are doing something, I create a branch and, and, uh, and do what I'm planning to do in that branch and then I merge it. Mm. To, are there yeah so are there any disadvantages for example at using branches or do you think uh, yeah i can't come uh, at the top of my head i can't remember any disadvantages -ish. the the cost of a branch is is so small that 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 uh, it's uh, it's no effort to use branches at all really and yeah. you, then you get the the work isolated from from the other things. Yeah. So. Also, I mean, for me, it's whenever I test a crazy idea, and also when I'm working with collaborators, then I almost exclusively use uh, branches. But the only thing I dislike about branches is that it does not keep the history linear, and sometimes it's nice. I mean, to have a uh, well. A linear structure of your repository and actually Bjorn you're going to show tomorrow on using um, git uh, bisect to find out bugs, bugs and that works on a linear on yeah, a linear right. uh, structure so in that case I mean it's helpful to have it but uh, but I think as as a beginner if you really do not know what you're doing then it's nice to work with branches because then you know you're not introducing any anything unwanted in in a main repository that's so, right yeah but uh, uh, one comment before we go uh, in exercise time is so you can also do the the optional exercise with branches and that's the fast word merge and the rebase if yes. you have the time so otherwise we 
are back 20 past. Okay. Um, yes, see you soon. And you're back. Okay, welcome back from the break. So now we have uh, several branches. We have the uh, master, our master branch, and we have uh, the uh, experiment branch, and we have the less salt one. And um, we will need now to merge this into master. So we'll go through how we do that. Uh, if um, if uh, the <coughs> the commit graph that you have is uh, different from this one, you, we can you can uh, or you got stuck in the above XSS, so uh, then you can clone the recipe before merged from uh, from GitHub. So there is a there is a recipe for doing that. So you can then step out of the, the repository and do git clone and the, the HTTPS address, cloning it and and CD into the recipe recipe before merge and if you do git graph there then you have have the repository in a state that's uh, that's after the exercise okay recipe so uh, we make sure that we're on the branch that we wish to merge to. So we can use the command git branch to see that we are on master. Then we merge the git into master, but writing git merge, git merge experiment. Experiment. And then I'll go to merge. And then I'll uh, write git graph to see if I get this the same. Graph. And it seems very equal. So what happens internally when you merge two branches is that it creates a new commit attempt to incorporate changes from both branches and records the state of all files in the new commit. So uh, a regular commit has one parent, but the merge commit has two parents. So we see that uh, the parents of the uh, master, the latest commit on the master branch are now the last experiment commit and, and the uh, and one from the master branch. Should people be typing along now? Yeah, that's probably a very good idea to type along. Um, to view the branches that are merged into the current branch, we can use the command git branch merged.
and we see that experiment is merged into master. We are also happy with the work on the less salt branch. So let us merge that as one or two into the master. Git branch, we are a master. Git merge less salt. So the git merge less salt opens an editor and, and there you can write a, a merged merge uh, commit message. Git graph. So now we got a repository that looks like this. The commit graph after merge. So observe how Git nicely merged the chain tamal to salt and a new ingredient in the same file without using us using merging the same file without us merging it manually. So the alt happened automatically. Get ingredients text, half on the, half, uh, one tablespoon of salt and uh, one tab tablespoon of cilantro, a teaspoon of salt was it. If the same file is changed in both branches, Git attempts to incorporate both changes into the merged file. So if the challenges overlap, then the, the user has to manually set merge, settle the merge conflicts, and we will do this later. So now we can safely delete the branches. Good, get branch. One is merged. We have merged experiment and merged less salt into monster. And you can then do branch minus T experiment and less salt to de delete the, the branches from the commit graph. Yeah, and minus D is for the merged branches. That's for the merged branches, yes. So now we will just has master and head pointing in the git uh, commit graph. So git graph will show the same thing. Only head and master, head pointing to master, uh, a master pointing to the latest merge commit. Yeah, so uh, so uh, basically the commits are still there, but the references to the, the branches is gone, yeah. right? That's right. Mm -hmm. so, so the names experiment and less salt are just uh, pointers to the commits themselves. Uh, Git will not let you delete a branch which has not been reintegrated unless you insist using Git branch minus capital D. So, and then your commits will not be lost, but you may have a, a challenge in time finding them as there is no branch pointing to them. Okay. Then, uh, we have something called tags. Maybe before we go to tags, may I ask you, so how often should we merge when we are dealing with like real repositories? 
is it good majophone or not? I mean, what, what is a good practice? And it really depends on, uh, on what you're doing. So if you're, you, you should merge when you are done a, 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 an identity of work. So something that's uh, an isolated set of work uh, or a unit of work, then you can, when that is finished, then you should do merge. Yeah, I think, well, the danger is if you're, if it takes many months to implement your uh, feature, then your collaborators may be, well, then the master or main branch may be well ahead of, uh, oh, definitely. of uh, the parent commit. And then uh, when you merge, you may end up in many different conflicts. So, but, um, so you should not uh, wait too but, long before merging. But uh, but then you have to look through with the reason for it take took many months to finish. Was it because you you didn't work on it before lately, or is it is the amount of work so huge that it takes several months to complete? Because well, I mean, it can be both. Yeah, if it's the uh, the latter, then you should commit more, uh, very often. Or what do you think? Yeah, so I think, so there is danger with both, in my opinion. So if you commit something which is unfinished, the risk is that others may use it. So you have to be very clear when you when you merge and say that this is still work in progress, um, but, uh, but it may be beneficial to merge just so that, well, so that one avoids uh, additional, well, unnecessary conflicts later on. Uh, but uh, but I think a, a good dialogue again. I mean, between collaborators is good. And then uh, if it's only your own branch, uh, well, your own repository uh, which you are not sharing yet, then uh, then I think uh, you should do what is most useful for you. But mm -hmm. yeah, it really depends. But I, I just uh, wanted to point out that there is no uh, ideal. Uh, answer. So it really depends on uh, on the project, just as Bjorn said. So you should think about this. Okay. So then we'll talk about tags, which can we can look like a branch, but it's a commit. It's a tag. It's a pointer to a commit, but it doesn't move like a branch tip branch to. So we use tags to record a particular states or milestones of a project at a given point in time, like for instance, a version, like uh, this is version 103. Uh, and that tag can then point to a hashtag. There are two ta basic types of tags, annotated and lightweight. Use annotated tags since they contain the author and can be cryptographically signed using GPG, timestamp, and, and message attached. So let's add a tag to our current state of the guacamole recipe. So you should can type along git tag minus a noble. 2021 message. Ooh. Recipe I made for the 2021 noble banquet. So Git show mobile twenty twenty one. The known revision. Git graph. So there we see that the tag is 
part of uh, the output pointing to the merge branch commit. Did show. Did show mobile. 2021. No, it doesn't show. I don't know why. It is. It seems it is expecting a path. Mm. I don't know. It's it's a bit weird. I mean, it should work with a commit, but uh, okay. So now we have used uh, some uh, a lot of commands. Git branch, git branch with a name creates a branch. Git checkout to uh, check out to a branch. Git merge, git branch minus D to um, delete a branch. And git branch, the, and the last one we, uh, we haven't used, but just listed, git branch minus capital D, delete an unmerged branch. So, and, and, and there's a shortcut for the checkout. There's a git checkout minus B and the branch name, so we create a branch and switch to it. So the the our participants have better eyes than us. So the git show uh, together with the reference tag that didn't that was wrong because the tag is called something else. So it should be Nobel twenty twenty one. Oh, it was. If you scroll up a bit. No noble. Noble oh, yeah. noble. <laughs> sorry, uh, right. it was a typo. But thank you for pointing this out. Noble. 2021. So can we get get it and show the tag, show the commit? Yeah, so git show can be used with the commit or references to a certain commit. And the reference can also be the tip of a branch or, or the tag in this case. Yeah. So uh, here's a typical workflow. So, you check out a branch, you work, commit, work, work. Then you check out the master and merge that new feature and then you delete the, new the feature branch. Okay, then I think it's branching with conflicts. Yes. Conflict resolutions, Diane. Exactly. So I'm going to uh, take over the screen share as soon as uh, Richard uh, says it's okay. And uh, while we get that ready, maybe Bjorn, you want Go to ahead. comment on what the dash A is together with the uh, tags. Dash A. Yeah, minus oh. A. So the minus A option together with the, the creation of the tag. That's uh, for annotated tags or? Yes, yes. So one can uh, basically add some uh, some additional message to the tag so that uh, when people check it, they know, okay, what is this tag all about? Right. So it's, uh, it's nice actually to annotate the tag as well because then uh, and you know uh, what the, what why the tag was introduced. So let's see. So Richard, am I good to screen share? Yes. Thank you. I think you can let's just see. grab it there. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, great. So um, font should be fine. At least it was the same as in the earlier today. If it's not, please let me know. So we learn now how to uh, merge um, different branches. And as some of you have experienced, you can actually get into conflicts when you try to, uh, to merge branches. And when does that appear? So uh, let's assume that we want to change a file. Uh, maybe you recognize part of the ingredients, txt. So we have like a, uh, we have some ingredients, the avocado, avocado, cilantro, and salt. And one of us, or well, on one branch, we modify um, um, we modify this file by adding the by adding a line and uh, modifying the amount of cilantro. And then on another branch, uh, I or someone else uh, modifies uh, the same uh, uh, file, um, and in that and uh, the modifications in that case are are uh, the amount of cilantro again, and then uh, the addition of uh, some onion to this. So uh, so basically, there are two different modifications in these two different branches, and at some point we will try to merge these. And um, and uh, we will see shortly is that when we just try to merge the, the modification of a, of the added line, then Git will know. Okay, this is a modification that you have done. You it will take it from granted that that is what you want. So it will merge it without conflicts. And the same, I mean, if if we only had modified the onion in the other branch, but but Git will not know. What do I do about this part of the code or this part of the file? What should I do? Should I have half a tablespoon of cilantro or two? And then we will see actually how we can deal with that. So, but basically conflicts appear when you have modifications in the same line of code or the same lines. I mean, if they are next to each other, then there can be several conflicts. So, um, and, um, and I should say that um, you should not be afraid to do, uh, to to get into conflicts. You can always abort a conflict. We will see if you do not know how to solve it, and you can. And if you are not sure, I mean, you do your best uh, best guess, and you can always revert back to some commit that you have done. Maybe this is a good point to say that as long as you have committed your changes. You can always report back to you, uh, back to them. It is more dangerous if you have actually spent, I don't know, hours or days changing something and you have not committed them, and then you lose them by well, we will see how how uh, some comments that uh, that can actually end into uh, messing up with your working directory. But but the point is commit often and especially the beginning. I mean, you want to make sure that what you, that your work is not lost basically. Okay, so then let's prepare a conflict and you may type along if you want, but we will have uh, the same, uh, well, the same steps as an exercise. So if you find it, it's too hard to both watch the stream and type along, then, then just uh, sit back and relax. And uh, if, um, if you have, um, if you do not have a recipe to work with, well, a local repository, uh, then uh, you may clone. Uh, this uh, from the code refinery GitHub, but I think most of you have actually already a working uh, a repo, so I, I would skip this uh, this step. And it, I should also say that you do not have to have an exactly identical repository. It's okay if you have uh, your own commits, fewer or more. That is perfectly fine. So let's uh, make two branches. Okay. So let's see, where am I first of all? So I stepped away from my computer for a while, so I should uh, check with Git status, what is the status of my repository? So I am on the master branch. I have no changes in my working directory. That's what working tree uh, clean means. And then I have no commits and I, I also have no uh, um, stage modifications. So everything is clean in my working directory, basically all, uh, my working tree is in sync with the head, which is 
which points to the latest commit. Maybe I should show that. So if I do git log one line, I see that the head reference points to the tip of the master branch, which is my latest commit. So all is good. So what I want to do is, okay, I will create two branches uh, from master and I will call one of them like cilantro. So git branch like cilantro from the master branch. And I'm also going to call one dislike cilantro. Dislike cilantro. We all have different preferences, so we will try these. And then let's do different modifications to the amount of the same ingredient on these two different branches. So um, uh, on the like cilantro branch, uh, I should do a change. So let's see. Um, uh, first of all, of course, I have to uh, switch to that branch, and uh, I can do that using git checkout, like cilantro. Yes, that's what the one we need to start with. And I should say that in if you have a newer version of git, you can also use the git switch command. They are identical in this particular case. So I am switching to the like cilantro um, branch. So all these branches. Um, there's also a working tree clean. Obviously, it's the same one. So let's see. On the branch, so uh, we, we are going to do one change, and the change is the amount of cilantro. So I will basically increase it from one tablespoon to two. And actually, I'm not sure how much cilantro I have in this. So I had one. I will increase it to two. I'm going to uh, uh, commit this uh, change. So first stage my modifications, we git add, and then I'm going to commit uh, more cilantro, let's see. Oh, more cilantro. Okay, and then uh, let's do a git uh, status. All is clean, and I will use the graph. Again, this is an alias for the git log with some options. One of them is the old one, uh, which means that all branches should be shown. So yes, so now I have the cilant like cilantro branch, which is ahead of my master branch. Um, okay, so then on the other branch, uh, the dislike cilantro, so I will switch to that. So git check out dislike cilantro. I'm going to first uh, edit the ingredients file, and then again, I mean, it should be in the same line, or at least uh, uh, um, uh, the modification should consist of at least one, uh, one common modified line. So here I will say I only use half of a tablespoon of cilantro, and I'm going to stage this with git add and uh, um, commit this modification, the cilantro. So we are not so creative in the, <laughs> or I am not so creative in the names of the commit messages. Okay, so now uh, uh, let's uh, go to the master branch and assume that uh, we want to merge these two different branches. So git check out master. So let's use git graph again. And I would say that it's a very good idea to use git graph often when you are merging branches because then you can have a good visual um, um, graph. Uh, of these uh, different branches. And I mean, of course, this, well, when you do not have many branches and many commits, it's easier to see, but if you have many branches, then you will, I think you will find it useful to use the git graph alias. Okay, so I have the master branch uh, with uh, with uh, that uh, that the head is pointing to right now. So we are at the tip of the master branch. And I have uh, like cilantro and dislike, which are both ahead uh, with one commit. And now what I will want to do is to implement these changes into the master branch. So let's um, let's merge the first one. So uh, 
the master on the master branch, and that will merge. Let's start as in the example or in the material. Let's start with the like cilantro one. So I want to merge this branch onto the master branch. So then it says that, okay, uh, it's a fast forward branch. And um, if I do a git graph again, I see that uh, basically the head has been moved to actually the same commit as before. And this, and I will spend a minute to explain. So um, usually when we create, a, uh, when we merge two branches, we create a new commit, which incorporates the two modifications. But because in, uh, in this case, we have, um, uh, well, these two branches like cilantro and, and uh, master, um, or let me rephrase, because the like cilantro uh, branch had um, as parent the head of the master branch, then what it does is a fast forward. So it does not create a new commit because that is not uh, needed in this case. I mean, there, are, there, is, there are no modifications um, from, uh, from existing commits that, uh, that should be uh, done. So then it's simply that the reference basically of the master branch is moved to this commit. So we have a reference. So head is pointing both to the tip of the master and the like cilantro branches. Okay, so this first merge went uh, on smoothly. So again, I am on the master branch and now I will try to incorporate what the modifications in my other branch. So I will merge that. Again, did merge the name of the branch I want to merge. And then the merge I want the branch I want to merge into. So the master branch. Okay, so then the so git prompts me with uh, with a message saying that auto merging has failed. There is a conflict in the file ingredients txt, and what I should do is I need to fix those conflicts, and then I can try to commit again. So then I open this file, and I use vi, but use your favorite editor, and uh, so you'll. What one can see is that around the, the cilent so so we have two markers basically um, uh, these um, arrows arrows um, um, which uh, delimitate the por uh, the portion of uh, of the file which can see uh, which uh, um, comprises the, the conflict. So we have uh, one line uh, from, uh, uh, from the master branch, uh, which is uh, the two tablespoons of cilantro. And then we have the same line and it can be several if, uh, if, uh, if the conflict is greater, so to say. Uh, so we have the same line from the other branch, the dislike cilantro. So head, which is pointing to the master, basically. And then we have uh, the modified line from this like cilantro. And then uh, what I need to do, yes, and also separated by this uh, line with uh, the equal signs, basically, which compare. Uh, so what I should do, I need to choose, basically, what do I want? Do I want two tablespoons of cilantro or half, or I want something completely else uh, that's, uh, that's really... Uh, for me to decide. And then, uh, uh, so let's say that uh, I am going to go for two. And uh, what I should do is I need to remove these delimiters. So this line disappears. And also this one here. So the file should be clean of delimiters, basically. If it, uh, you need to have um, the content that you actually want to commit. So no delimiters. And then uh, I am, once I have edited the file, then if, if you check its status, it says that I have a modified file, which is not staged yet. So I do have to stage it before doing anything else. So git, well, sorry, before and before committing it. So I am going to stage the files. And, um, and one important, uh, 
Git is actually very smart in producing useful messages. It tells me that uh, that I can abort a merge if I if I uh, uh, do not know how to solve the conflicts. Um, but in this case, I do want to uh, solve them, and then I just need to type git commit again. And I do not need to specify a new message. It's going to uh, take the the same as I have attempted. Uh, before. So just git commit. It's going to prompt me with um, um, with a message. I can just keep it as git, sorry, as merge branch to slide cilantro and save it. And what I have is a new commit with this hash uh, and the commit message. So if I do git graph again, then I see that I have this new merge which has the parents, well, the previous commits of the dislike cilantro and mastery branches. So uh, this is how one can solve conflicts. And in the following, we are going to take uh, uh, 20 minutes uh, for- D Diana? Yes. Could you just repeat why the first um, merge worked but the second failed? So yes. Um, uh, I think let's, so we have git graph. The first merge we had attempted was, uh, let me think. It was this one. This is, right? This is where we merged like cilantro with the master. So if I do git diff of uh, this uh, uh, commit, so the like cilantro, um and uh, the initial uh, uh, and the commit for uh, for what the the commit corresponding to the master branch before we uh, added the cilantro so then what i see that there was one modification uh and that was uh, changing the amount of cilantro and um maybe it's not uh, so clear clear here but um so um um let me rephrase so um the conflict arises when we have two modifications which are conflicting in the very first merge we had only one modification and that was uh, the amount of cilantro the master branch well there were simply no new modifications to the master branch so there were no conflicts to interfere with. So again, I mean, conflicts arise when there are two modifications. I mean, doesn't mean that the files are different, but the modifications introduced uh, from the parent commit, from, well, from the common parent commits, they have to be different. So uh, Jorn, do you think I should rephrase or is that more or less clear? Uh, I think it was clearer. Okay, so um, as an exercise, you will try to um, uh, recreate a conflict uh, in two different branches and then uh, merge them. And uh, yes, here, create and resolve a conflict. So we do that as an exercise. And then we are going to have uh, a short break and then we come back at uh, 20 past, I think would be good. What do you say beyond? 20 past sounds like a- That sounds like a good plan. Good plan, good. Okay, so exercise and then break and we are back at 20 past. Welcome back everyone. Um, just a short wrap up of the conflicts. Uh, Part. So uh, there are, um, uh, if you have, for example, conflicts and you want to merge them automatically, then uh, you may use uh, the recursive uh, option together with git merge and uh, the uh, X hours. If you want to incorporate the changes that were on the branch that you are onto. So for example, git merge recursive, Hours less avocados will merge the changes which are on the on the current branch uh, in 
in this case, uh, master, although it's not obvious here. If you want, for example, to incorporate the, the changes which are um, on the branch that you want to merge, then, uh, then uh, you should use the dares option. So um, dash uh, capital X dares. So this is an automatic uh, way of merging when you know that, okay, do I want to always take the changes which are in the master branch if there are conflicts or not? So then, uh, then that's uh, one way to do it. And, uh, and always, if you are in doubt, then you can abort the merge uh, using the git merge dash dash abort command. So uh, this is helpful if you really do not know what you should, uh, um, which, uh, uh, how you should change the files. And then uh, you may need to talk to one of your colleagues or, or uh, fellow collaborators and agree on the changes to be implemented. And uh, that, uh, that was it about conflicts and uh, just some notes on uh, merging. So we had the rebase optional exercise when it comes to uh, merging branches. And I realized that, well, not all of you are, uh, are uh, comfortable with that because we have not really covered it. And uh, yeah, sorry for the confusion. It was only intended as an optional exercise. So um you must not do it and we will try to uh, to add uh, more information for those that uh, that uh, still find it useful and want to learn more about it so uh should we do Bjorn, some uh... yes then it's time to wrap up for today so we have almost hit 150 questions from from the q a Uh, all the questions that uh, you omitted and written in the hedge doc will be available in an archive log later today. So they will uh, be available uh, online uh, uh, after the course, but uh, already from uh, later today. Um, Do you so want that, me to take over the screen share and uh, maybe um, show the HackMD or yeah, I can the do collaborative that. document? So I think we have questions from all uh, parts of the lesson today. We have gone through conflict resolution. And um, yeah, so maybe we should remind everyone as well about the feedback which you find it at the very bottom of the of the online document. Yes. Yes. I've added a section there. There's a poll there um, to let us know overall things and then preform text and we'll try to answer to some of the feedback also.
the other news I have includes Twitch will have the video stored immediately for review. I'll try to get them posted to YouTube by tonight. Uh, check the installation configuration. If anything went wrong today, you can look over the installation script again and see how that goes. Um, and the course webpage will have any other updates we can think of, and it has quick links to everything. So. Yeah, and uh, maybe we can mention that tomorrow we are going to uh, show you how you can share your uh, repository online on GitHub in particular. And uh, if you do not have a GitHub account, then uh, now is the time to set that up. Um, and also uh, you most likely want to have a two-factor authentication as well set up with your account. Okay. And we will be going through also inspecting history and uh, and uh, doing doing some Git archaeology and uh, and doing things. Yeah, and that's really helpful if you want to find bugs in your in your code. At least I find it very helpful. And. Um, we will also discuss how much Git is necessary. For some Git, Git is a, a tool they use for everything and for others, Git is just used for code. So, but we will discuss that tomorrow. Yeah. Is there any type of feedback, uh, Richard? Yeah. So <laughs> one thing I noticed, someone requested more personal experiences about how we use Git ourselves, and someone requested more getting straight to the point. So what we generally try to do, or what we'll try to do is during the icebreaker time, so the 10 minutes while we're connecting and getting started, we'll try to schedule some sort of more personal stories or about us, how we use different tools then. So that's a reason to join early and get prepared. Mm. Yeah, I'm glad that, I think this is the most just right for speed I've seen before. Um, uh, no more um moments. And I just said, um, isn't that great? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, we'll have a wide variety. Like the instructors are changing every day, so you'll get different experiences and um, everything. Mm. Yeah, well, it's just about the end time according to what I see here. Um, yeah, and don't forget, so this is here for free, but we always would like more volunteers to work with us. So if you're really liking it, bring friends back next time. Be a team leader, be a co-instructor. We can find something for everyone. So with that being said, I guess see you tomorrow, 10 minutes before the hour starts in whatever time zone you are. Yep, see you tomorrow. Okay, thanks so much. Bye.